sunshine, sunshine, where have you gone? Blue sky, blue sky, I'm holding on for you. I won't let the storm clouds get in my way this time. Cause I know I know you're mine. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. With your love from the start I'm chasing the rainbow Through the rain I know it's gonna, it's gonna It's gonna be a beautiful day Yeah Yeah Welcome to week two of Burns to Blessings I am so glad that you're joining us again this week As we begin this week's study We're going to realize the importance Of sharing each other's story We're going to see how being able to speak that story begins the transformation from burdens to the blessings. So come with me. I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you today. Sunshine, sunshine, where have you gone? Welcome to session two of Burdens to Blessings. You've just gone through our icebreaker. Tell me what it was like to look at those pictures of yourself as toddlers, little girls. Were you able to choose which picture belonged to which woman? No. Yes. Was it hard? Were some of them like really surprising? Yes. I found mine that I wanted to share with you. This was me when I was a little girl. Could you tell that that was me? Kind of. It just brought back just a lot of memories going back through looking at those pictures. What about you all? Was it kind of an emotional journey a little bit for you? I started thinking about what I had hoped then. I thought about the dreams. So the expectations and in what life really becomes sometimes is, is so different. So the emotion of it can really, it can be hard at times. But it's important to go back there for us to understand kind of where we came from, to look at that little girl again, to take time to really think about her. And one of the things that I loved about my time going back and visiting is I found some things that I wanted to share with you all that my grandparents had saved for me. Oh, I know. That was me. Can you imagine? Um, I know. It's just like, yes. So that was, that was really something I wore. I cannot, I, and I know to have that after this many years. And then I have more surprises. I have these. Evidently, I must have given those black patent leather shoes to somebody. But anyway, um, so there's some little shoes. I mean, it's just really hard to believe, isn't it? But just the steps that we've taken. And so I saved the best for last. Hold this handbag. I know. This is, I know. When I found it, I, I was just so, I just thought it was so precious. I don't let these, when I travel, I don't let them leave my side. They don't go in the baggage claim. I love the fact that they were saved for me and that I have those memories and that I can reflect back to those first four years of my life. I've shared with you um, what happened at the age of four and the hurt uh, from being taken from my grandparents and the emotions that I felt. But God sometimes, most of the time, maybe always prepares us in ways that maybe we don't even realize he's preparing us. One of the ways that my grandfather prepared me was memories that we had and words that he would say to me that and still until this day, I remember. We lived in a small Virginia town and one of my favorite times was we would swing on the front porch, the porch swing. But this partic one particular evening, my grandfather said to me, he said, Kim, I want to tell you something, and I don't want you to ever, ever forget it. And I said, okay. And he goes, there's someone who loves you so much. I said, I know. I knew who it was, too. I know. I know how much you love me. And he goes, oh, but there's someone else, and I want to tell you about him. There's someone who loves you so much that he will go with you no matter where you go no matter what happens, and he was always with you, and his name is Jesus. I thought that was the funniest thing that anybody could ever love me more than my grandfather. It was just totally impossible to me. I couldn't even think of what that might be like. 
But what was happening was my grandfather was preparing me. He knew that soon I would be leaving him. And he was trying to instill in me the truth that no matter what happened, no matter where I found myself, no matter what hurt that I would come in contact with, that he wanted me to know that I was never alone. He wanted me to know that there was one that would always be with me and that would always love me. And you know, ladies, at that age, I mean, that was just a tough concept for me. I really just couldn't really understand it. But at age four, when I was taken from the one home and I moved into the other home, that downward spiral that began to take place at that moment, those were the words that sustained me. Those were the words that no matter what happened, I would remember. As that downward spiral began, and you've got to understand it was two totally different homes. The one home where I felt that I was the princess moving into the other home while I was not a princess. And I really wasn't sure how I was supposed to handle that other than how can I make these people happy? How can I perform well enough that they will be okay? How can I do the things to please them that they'll kind of like me a little bit? And I know we've all dealt with that. And as I began to do that, I began to realize something, even as a little girl through the years that would follow, is that I really did begin to lose that little girl that I loved being so much. It was in my mind I had to pack her up. She wasn't emotionally available. She wasn't available to me anymore. It was too much, it was too much hurt to remember her, so I had to just pack her up and move away. And I bet there have been times like that in your life. You know, there's an old saying that says, life can only be understood backwards, but yet it must always be lived forward. There's so much truth in that, isn't there? Looking back helped me to see that God really was in my brown bag all along even though at the time I felt so distant from him and didn't really understand that he was even there. But when you're in hurting and when you're in pain, when your marriage is breaking up, when you lost someone in your family, when there's a diagnosis that happens, you don't see, you can't, you can't see that a transformation can happen from that. But looking back is the only way that we can really see that. Don't you agree? Looking forward, it just seems no way. There's no way possible. But looking back, we begin to understand that God really was with us in our painful times. He really was there. And that we can begin to talk about those hurts rather than feeling like we have to hide them. Like we did last week. To really be able to just write on that heart and to be able to say, this is my hurt. That was a huge step for a lot of people. It's a huge step. And good for you for taking that step. But to realize that no, not one person pointed at you or not one person made fun, that you saw tears of compassion and kindness. We connect in those things, those hurts, those things that we've walked through. That's where our hearts really connect. That's why I can say to you today with 100% confidence, and not in my confidence, but in the confidence of what God can do, that our burdens our burdens, anything that's in our bag, can become some of the greatest blessings in our lives. Do you believe it? Oh, we're working on it, aren't we? <laughs> we're getting there. And you know, that's all that God wants. He just wants us to be available, just to be open. I don't know. I ran from it for so many years. So for you all just to be open, I know God's up there going, yes, those are my girls right there. They really want to seek me. They really want to see what I have to say. One way, as we talk about how God works in our lives and how He begins this transformation is by using other people in our lives. Isn't that true? By having those people in our lives that someone has touched it in such a way that when you look back in your Rolodex of memories that you have, oh, there, that person changed my life. Oh, that was a turning point in my life. Oh, what would I have done without that person in my life? And when I start rolling my Rolodex, one of the ladies that I remember so well is the lady in gray. 
I don't know her name. I think I was probably in the fourth or fifth grade by this time. I had to move from Virginia to North Carolina. And um, I was sad. I was very sad. I was lost. I wasn't sure of anything. I know at that age you never are anyway, but I was just lost. I can remember there was a lady in gray, and she would always come. We lived right across the street from a cemetery. And this lady would come to the cemetery almost every day. I would see her little car pulling in, and I would see her get out, and I would see her walk over and sit where her loved one had been buried, and she would shake. Her little shoulders would shake, and I knew she was so sad. And it just broke my heart because I knew that sadness. I didn't really understand life and death really then, but I understood she was so sad. And I wanted to reach out to her so badly. And I remember I walked over and I was very insecure. I had no confidence about me. And I just walked up and she just, in the midst of her grief, just smiled. And I asked her, I said, why are you so sad? And she went on to tell me about how her daughter had been killed in an automobile accident and how the daughter had, um, that's where her daughter was. And she would come, come to see her and spend time with her and, and talk to her. And I just remember thinking, this woman is so sad. But yet when she looks at me, she's happy. And it makes me still realize to this day, ladies, how that in our grief, in our sadness, how we can still bring such joy to other people, that even we don't have to be completely healed or something doesn't have to be completely perfect in our life to be able to reach out and touch someone and really make a difference in their lives. That woman was in her rawness, but yet her compassion was there for a little girl who really needed it so badly. Okay, so we talked about how people God uses to change and transform our lives. He also, as you all know, uses events in our lives to help us to see truth and to see His love and to really get what He's trying to say to us. In my life, two of the events that really turned me around, that caused me to really see love, was the birth of both of my boys. I remember how scared I was to be a mom because of a relationship with my mom. And I was just so afraid. I wasn't ready. I didn't want to be pregnant. I didn't want to have a baby. And guess what? It just happened anyway. And I can remember being rolled in to have the bo my first one, Trey. And you know, it, it just, it happens. And then all of a sudden you've got this baby and I can remember thinking, oh my gosh, Lee, it's real. And as I was holding him, I remember a nurse in my peripheral vision coming around to to take Trey away from me. And the first thing I did was I tucked him in and I thought, oh no, you're not getting my baby. No way. And that was the first chisel in my heart with my mom. That was the first chisel of why mother had taken me away. That was the first chisel of knowing what real love is and understanding that with our children, with those that we love, Sometimes we're not in the perfect situations, but love seems to take us beyond that. And God began speaking to me about my relationship with my mother. It was a very hard relationship. I held so much anger. But after having the boys, I realized something, that my mother's love for me was more important than some of the things that I had to endure. She didn't want those things to happen. That wasn't what she wanted. What she wanted was to provide the love and the home that she had had. And as God began to work all of these things in my head and my mind, I thought, it's time. I've got to make things okay. I've got to step out. I've got to do something. So I sent to her a dozen roses on Valentine's Day. And I really didn't put anything on the card because she knew that when she got them, she would know that it was my way of saying, let's, let's make this better. Let's do whatever it takes. And I waited on mother to call. And finally, the phone rang and I picked it up and I said, hello, and all I heard was mother crying on the other end. It was just immediate. And most of the time, healing takes place over time. Most of the time it's a process, but when God understands that there's not a lot of time left. 
He can expedite things, and that's what he did that day. Because at that moment, what we didn't know that we would find out one week later, just one week later, was that mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And within nine weeks, she would be gone. Easter Sunday morning, she was gone. It was sad. It was the most grieving time of my life because during that nine weeks, I really got to know mother. I got to hear her dreams. I got to hear why she hurt. I got to hear so many things that I would have never known before. And that's why, ladies, with this Burdens to Blessings lesson, that is so important. That's why I keep saying, if God puts something on your heart to say or do or send or to travel to, to do it, because we don't know the times. We don't know why God's putting things on our heart. Can you imagine the difference it would have been if I had waited till after mother was diagnosed? Do you think that we would both wondered how authentic that was? Do you think that I would be able to go, well, why did I really do it? I'm so thankful for that one time that I really listened and did what God was telling me to do. So that was a very, it was a very trying, hurtful time in my life. I really thought God was going to heal her. I thought it was going to be okay. I thought, you know, okay, mother and I are going to be able to share about abuse and how you need to be authentic. And, you know, we're going to, I can just, um, boy, God, I can just see it. This is so great what you're doing. So you can imagine when I drove away from her funeral, how sad it was for me to think, well, God, here we go again. Here we go. And I started thinking, maybe God, maybe you just don't even like me either. Have you ever felt that way? It's like, maybe, maybe you don't get me either. And I will tell you that my husband and I were driving out, and it was a rainy, dark, dreary, horrible day. And as we were driving out, I just, I just closed my eyes. I just wanted to be sad for all the years, for all the times I missed, for all those things. I just wanted to be sad for the loss. And not long after that, my husband's like, Kim, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I'm going, I just want to be sad. No, 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 you've got to open your eyes. You've got to open your eyes. And after a while, I did. I opened my eyes, and what I saw was the rain clouds had gone. The dark clouds had been blown away by the wind, and it was like beautiful and blue and sunny. And there was the most beautiful rainbow from horizon to horizon. It was God saying, don't let your own expectations rob you of what I have planned. Let me be God. I know what's best. Did he understand I was hurting? You bet he did. But did he have a great plan? You bet he did. This was like a pivotal moment in my life. It was a moment that I knew God was speaking to me. It was, it was a powerful moment in my life. And wouldn't you have thought that I would have learned from it? Wouldn't you think that that would have stayed with me like a little bit longer than a week? <laughs> Something so. But it didn't. I went home, back to Georgia, where I was living then. And before long, I'd fallen right back in my same old, yes, I'm good, how are you? How's your mom? I heard she had died. Oh, well, praise God, you know, she's, she's in heaven. She's not suffering anymore. Oh, my gosh, the words that we know how to say. Don't we? The words we know how to say. And we are crumbling on the inside. I was the most confused I'd ever been in my life. I'd lost my mother. She had said, don't live like I'm dying. I'm coming back to two kids. I'm anorexic. I'm popping diet pills like crazy. And I'm going to church, and I'm leading the women's ministry. I was messed up, wasn't I? I spoke one time, and this lady walked up to me, and she goes, um, Kim, uh, did you know exactly how messed up you were? <laughs> well, yeah, I figured it out. I struggled with it every day. But I went back, and I fell into that routine. And we had had this large ladies' event, and I had orchestrated it, organized it. It was a great event. Barely could get out of there. It's like, if I don't, I've just got to get out of here. I've got to breathe. Have you ever felt like that? It's like, it's getting so heavy. If I don't keep darting my eyes and moving around, somebody's going to see this pain. And we don't like that, do we? And God forbid we don't cry in public. You know, that, that was my thing. It's like, oh, I'm stronger than that. <laughs> I'm a big girl. I was told to be a big girl, and I'll, I'll, I'll be that big girl. Walk into the grocery store after the women's event. I'd started to let down just a little bit. It's like, okay, did it. Got it. And I'm somewhere over in the produce section, and this lady 
again, catches me completely off guard. She walks up and she touches me. And she says, Kim, how are you? Really? Bad move. Bad, bad, bad move. I left my grocery cart. I thought if I do not get out of this grocery store, I am going to start crying and I will never stop crying. The human touch. And really stopping when you say, how are you? Really? Oh, her eyes. Something so, I knew she cared. I went running into my car as, as fast as I could. I mean, I was chucking it. I was just like, just let me get to my car, let me get to my car, and I get out there, I close the door, I roll up the windows, and I throw myself over the steering wheel, and I'm going, oh, I have got to get over this. I have got to grow up. I have got to be a big girl. I have got, and I'm just crying, and it's all coming out, and it's just, I mean, I'm just boo-hooing, and, and then finally it just like, okay, I have got to get over this. I, this is crazy. How many of you all done? This is ridiculous. Grow up, Kim. Put on your big girl panties and grow up. So I sat up and I felt God around me. I just felt his presence. And I said to him, God, I'm okay. I'm okay. Just, you can leave now. I'm okay. Still felt it. It was just, you know what I'm talking about? And I said, God, I am okay. I'm really okay. And a thought pierced through my brain as just as loudly as if you had said it to me. He said, no, Kim, you are not okay. But you can be. But you can be. Oh, you thought I cried before. I, I just, I mean, it's just like I had hope. Really? Me? I can be okay, God? It was just too much for me to even think about. I remember riding home and going upstairs and thinking, I, I've got to figure this out. I've got to know what God is trying to say to me. Is there even a remote possibility that I can find my way back to being okay? Because that's all the way back to when I was four years old, really, if you want to think about it. That's really where it all began. And as I went upstairs and I began to really go to God and say, what, what did you mean? When I say that I talk to God, do you all get what I mean? You know, it's like prayer. It's just like, God, is this possible? I was broken. I was hurting. And for him to think that there was a possibility just was like, ah, just tell me how. And I found this scripture. After the powerful truth that God had just given to me, no, no. Kim, you're not okay, but you can be. I had enough knowledge in me to know that this was the place to turn to if I was going to be okay. I knew that this had to be the place where I needed to go and find out what it was that he was trying to say to me. And where he led me, ladies, is to Matthew eleven twenty-eight. It was that verse where he was saying, just come to me. Just come to me. I had a habit of running to everywhere else. I had a habit of running to the cute little shoe shop or the, the cute little hair color shop. Or I was a jazzercise woman. Did you y'all remember jazzercise? Did I just did I just date myself like a long way? How can I look better and feel better? And how can I? That's the way to make me okay. But he says no. God was saying, come to me. If you're that weary, and if you're that burdened, then why don't you come to me? Why don't you just turn things over? And he says, and I, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. What does that mean, ladies? When you read that scripture, what does that mean? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come to me. Okay, come means what? Shows what? Action. Yeah. Action. There's action involved. There's something that I need to do. Come to me. Who's me? God. Come to me. All you, put your name in there. Dare you to put your name in there. Come to me, Kim. Come to me, Debbie. Come to me. All ye who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Who is all? 
everyone, all, all ages, all denominations, all seasons of life, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, people who don't even know, that haven't even been in a church. He says, come, come to me, all ye who are weary and burdened. What does weary mean? Does anybody know what weary means? Tired, exhausted, on the verge of giving up, on the verge of saying, I can't take it anymore, on the verge of, God, why? why? All ye who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Okay, now, when he was saying this to me, I thought initially this was great news because come to me, um, and it is, it is great news. But come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I thought it was like a vacation, like, you know, a trip to Cancun or somewhere where you just go and rest. And that's a wonderful thing to have, right? But what God was saying was so much better. He was saying, come, come to me and bring everything with you. You as a whole package. Don't come to me hiding parts of yourself. Don't come to me trying to act like um, God is good and God bless you and bless your heart. He said, come to me as you are, weary and burdened. He says, leave the good stuff behind. Bring the brokenness to me. Bring the hurt. Bring your bag to me. He says, and if you will, I will give you rest. Rest there in the Greek means reversal. Reversal. He says, I want to do a U-turn with something in your life. And what do you think that is? Burden in the Greek means a task in waiting. Now, who really ever thought about burden being a task in waiting? The things that are weighing us down, God is saying, that's a task I have for you, just waiting. I know. It doesn't sound possible, does it? It really doesn't. That's God. That's how he does things. But he's saying, bring the burden, bring the worry, bring the heaviness, bring the thing that's still in your joy, bring the thing that's gobbling at your peace, bring it to me because I want to reverse it to your task in waiting. To me, when I think task in waiting, I think about that word purpose. How many times do we walk around going, what's my purpose in life? Oh, there's been a zillion books written about it, which is good, but we still, it's hard to get. When people say you have your very own unique purpose, does that kind of overwhelm you? Like, whoa, I have no idea what it could be. And then we start listing all the things that we're good at. Well, I can organize. I can bake some really good brownies. But... Other than that, I'm kind of lost. Who would ever believe that God's calling us to bring the thing that hurts us the most to Him so that it can become our task, it can be become our voice to someone else, not only to ourselves first, but to someone else. Bring your burdens to me. Bring whatever is in that bag to me. Bring that marriage you're about to walk out to me. Bring that son that you haven't seen in three years to me. Bring all this stuff that is weighing on your mind. Bring it to me and lay it at my feet. Let's see what I can do with it. Aren't we tired of carrying that bag? Aren't we tired of carrying those people? Aren't we tired of carrying those losses and those things? Aren't you tired of regretting things? Aren't you tired of feeling guilty? That's not what God wants. We talked about that last week. That's not what God wants. He wants to reverse that. He wants us to just consider, just consider that the things that are tucked in our heart that maybe you've never talked about are the very things that you could find the courage to share that are going to give other people hope. I can tell you about the good things in my life all day long. Nobody's going to be too impressed. But if I begin to share with you the things that God has gotten me through and the hurts, I'll have lots more friends because we relate to that. And we want to know, how did you get through that? How did you save that marriage? 
How did you heal from that abuse? How did you find joy in the midst of all that? Isn't that what really sparks a conversation that we want to hear about? And we're no different than all the other women around us. God may be saying to each of us right now, ladies, and I really want you to zone in on on yourself right now. I want you to think about this in your heart. Is he saying you sure look good on the outside, but I can see the brokenness on the inside. I can see the pain, and I can see the hurt. I know you might be able to hide it from everyone else, but I'm down there in that bag, and I'm waiting for you right there. I don't know about you ladies, but I truly believe this with my whole heart. I believe the time has come where we really say, I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of this guilt. I'm tired of this regret. I'm tired of this. God, I want your best. I want to do whatever it is that I need to do to start walking to your best. There's a statement in the Burdens to Blessings book that I love. Your life, and I read this often when I start feeling burdened because we still carry burdens. We're all only one phone call away from being burdened again, right? Your life is on the verge of being a great blessing. Your life is on the verge of being a great blessing. What do you think, ladies? Are you ready? Are you, are, are, am, I, am, I, am I using enough of God's promises to make you think maybe, maybe? I know, it's a lot, because I know your hurts are real, and I know your hurts are deep, and I know you haven't allowed yourself to go there, and I know that you've closed that door and you go, nobody's getting in here, nobody. But God's there. I know He is. I promised myself, like I told you last week, I wouldn't share anything that I haven't experienced myself. And I know, without a doubt, what God can do in, in our lives. So again, this week, the best way to start making the transition from the burden that you're carrying into the blessing that God has waiting for you is to begin to talk. You all have gone through a couple activities together already, and now you're beginning to bond, and I hope you're realizing how much you can trust the ones around you. We're gonna stop now for about 30 minutes and allow you all to go through your talk time, and again, challenge yourself. Ask God to give you the courage. Ask Him, God, are you sure? Is this, you really think I should share this? And then go for it. I will promise you, you will not be sorry. Based on God's word, you will not be sorry.